All right, can you tell me who you are and what's happening here? Okay, uh, I'm Joel Shinneman from Office of Water Programs. And uh, what we have here is a uh, stormwater automated uh, sampling setup, sampling and uh, flow metering. And uh, you can see it kind of starts over here on the left. We have a representation of runoff coming down a street into a drain inlet. And then when it comes to the roadside, we have a, uh, our primary measurement device, which in this case is a flume. And attached to the flume is our flow meter using a bubbler tube. And the bubbler tube pushes air into the bottom of the flume and it measures the pressure it takes for the bubble to be pushed to the bottom. That gives you a depth of water in the flume. And then programmed into the flow meter is a depth to flow rate equation, which will then tell the flow meter what flow rate we're getting uh, based on that depth. The flow, the flow meter will talk to the automated sampler uh, and depending on how you program it, we'll take a sample whenever you want it to, uh, the water coming out of the flume. Uh, generally they're flow weighted samples, so if you know you want about 200 samples over the course of a storm and you're going to get X amount of water, you can have it programmed to say every uh, two gallons or so it takes 85 milliliter sample and deposits it in your carboy. And then over the course of the storm, it continues to add to that. And ideally, at the end of the storm, you end up with a carboy of uh, sample water that you can take for analysis that is a good representation of the entire storm. Uh, the other equipment is, this is a rain gauge. It's your standard tipping rain gauge. Every time the uh, water fills the cup, it tilts over, which sends a signal to the flow meter telling it that a hundredth of an inch of rain has fallen. And it measures this over time, as well as flow over time. And uh, from that, you can come and download the data and get yourself a hydrograph and hydrograph that's nicely matched and uh, lets you know what the storm looked like. It'll also put points on there where samples have been taken over time. Uh, and the whole thing's powered off of a solar panel, which also feeds a uh, deep cycle marine battery so that during the day, the battery gets topped off from the solar panel. and. Uh, if a storm happens at night, then you can run off battery power. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole setup. Generally, all of this equipment will be kept in a, uh, a locked storage container, uh, usually bolted to a concrete pad on the site, uh, just to keep it from being vandalized or uh, from anybody from accessing it that shouldn't. And they're all uh, weatherproof? like. For rain, sun? Oh yeah, these are, they're fairly weatherproof. I don't believe that they're, uh, you can splash water on them, but they're not rated for like submersion or for, I think, long-term um, store, like for, to be out in water for a long time. Uh, you can get either these really small enclosures, which will keep your, uh, just a sampler and uh, your carboy, and it has a weatherproof cap. Or like I said, what's generally used is they use a, a big weatherproof fiberglass enclosure which stores everything with the anything that keeps, so it gives you a place to mount your solar panel and outside in your rain gauge as well. Is there a way to use more of just one uh, carboy? Yeah, so you can either set it to have a single carboy or you can go four, six, eight, and I believe it even goes to 24, maybe 12 sample bottles, and it'll have a, uh, a distributor arm on the bottom of this, and it will deposit sample in each bottle in turn, uh, depending on how you set this up. You can have it deposit and fill bottles over the course of the storm, and then you can come back later and flow weight each sample, or time weight them if you want, um, or you can have it deposit in all bottles uh, equally. But yeah, you can have multiple bottle setups um, with these samplers. Is there a way to connect the reporting data with the remote cellular phone, anything like that? Yeah, the, uh, the flow meters have a uh, modem connection. Uh, they come in this uh, weatherproof box about this big, it uses a standard uh, cell phone uh, SIM chip, and you can dial into them, and you can actually program them over that connection, and you can download any of the data from them. Uh, or you can, uh, yeah, exactly. So you can download, download or program them. Basically, everything you can do with the laptop over the modem. The carboys, it says it has to be a special glass, or it can, can be any car. It depends on the uh, uh, on the constituents. I think 
We generally use the five gallon glass carboys, which is a borosilicate, um, because some certain uh, constituents need to be collected in a glass bottle. Um, I have seen uh, polyethylene sample bottles, which are also fairly common. Uh, it just depends on if your constituents are sensitive to being in, in plastic, uh, from my understanding. So let me ask you again about uh, how do you measure with using those tubes there? Okay. So inside this flume, this bubbler line runs to a small pocket at the bottom of the flume. And the flow meter pushes air until the bubbles are released from the bottom. And that tells it exactly what depth of water is kept is in the flume currently. And then based on the flume type, you program that into the flow meter and it has a, a mathematical relationship between depth in the flume and what that equates to flow rate. And these will do trapezoidal flumes, they'll do different weir plates, they'll also do uh, just regular round pipes. Um, so yeah. Thank you.